Hello, and welcome to the Virtual Robotics Toolkit. Today, I'll introduce to you our user interface. Let's begin by moving our mouse near the top of our screen. We will see a toolbar appear. Starting from left to right, the first button opens up a brand new window where you could select all the levels that are supported in the Virtual Robotics Toolkit. Here you could also select competitions where you could register online and submit a score on a leaderboard. You could also participate in First Lego League and World Robotic Olympiad. Let's begin by selecting the first button and entering the Sandbox EV3 environment. Now when I move my mouse cursor to the top of the screen, the toolbar will be brought down once more. The second button is used to begin the simulation, where the robot can move and interact with the environment. The third button stops the simulation and resets the program. The fourth button will bring up a brand new window where we can alter the attachments to our existing robot. The fifth button toggles the display of the scoreboard. In this level, there is no score. The sixth button toggles the brick menu. The seventh button maximizes the EV3 Mindstorms environment. The eighth button maximizes the learning environment. The tenth button resets all the windows to the default positions. The second to last button minimizes the learning environment. The last button closes the program. Now that we have covered the simple toolbar, let us look at the advanced mode. We can change the user interface to advanced mode by pressing F12 on our keyboard. Advanced mode has all the capabilities that our strong powerful physics enabled software was designed for. Starting from the left of our toolbar, we'll notice that some of these buttons are quite familiar and other buttons seem brand new. The first button opens up the menu where we can select our levels. The second button opens up any projects that we have saved in the past. The third button saves our current project. The fourth button undoes anything that we accidentally did, such as if I move my robot, I can undo that movement. The fifth button, I could redo that movement. We are all familiar with the play button. It starts the simulation. This button right here advances the simulation by one step. This is unavailable to me at this moment. The eighth button stops the simulation. The ninth button goes back to a previous save state. The tenth button goes forward to the next save state. The eleventh button trucks the camera. The twelfth button helps me move objects. The thirteenth button rotates said object. If I accidentally lose my object, the 14th button helps me find the object that I selected. The 15th button is my favorite. It is used to import a robot. For this example, I'm going to import a custom robot that I have created called Grabby King. It must be an LDRAW format. After the program has identified and assigned physics to each of the parts, I have to select Next. The Next menu shows me various components assigned to the robot. By hitting Next another time, I can actually assign the port setup. So in this case, unlike in real life, we do not have little wires that connect from port to port. For this example, I'm going to select B and C for the large servo motors, and A and D for the medium motors. For the sensors, I have none. Much like in real life where you could pick up the robot and put it where it needs to be, instead we could assign keys to the associated wheels. 
So if I click on the, large, the first motor, we'll see that there's a green spot right here. I've selected my right wheel. I'm going to select the other motor. This is my left wheel. I'm not going to assign the medium motors The 16th button brings up our menu where we can alter the attachments. The 17th button brings up our real-time data. In this case, I don't have any sensors attached to the robot, so no data will be relayed to the output. The next button shows our scoreboard. Again, this level does not have any scores associated with it. Here. Here are all the objects that exist in the, the here is all the objects that exist in the environment. We see that the educator vehicle exists, as well as three cubes and the sandbox. The 20th button opens up our objects library. This is the list of all the objects that exist in the environment. The 21st button shows object properties. This is where I can resize my objects. The 22nd button can lay down markers for visual representation of where I want to go. The 23rd button toggles the intelligent brick display. The second to last button maximizes the EV3 learning environment. The last button reveals the mission manager. This is for more advanced triggers. This concludes our video for the introduction to our Virtual Robotics Toolkit.